All right, so we're live with Chef Aarti Sampat. Namaste, good evening, and a warm welcome today from all of us over here at IICA. Welcome to another edition of Master Strokes by IICA. My name is Arjun Datta, and I'm your host for this evening. A lot can be said about our guest today. She's highly accomplished. She is, in fact, a role model for women all across the country and the world. And she has time and again approved to all of us that there is no such thing as impossible. So please join me to welcome Chef Aarti Sampath all the way over from the United States. Chef Aarti, thank you so, so much for being here with us. Thank you. It is such an honor to host you today. Of course, the pleasure is all mine. I'm more than excited to like connect with you, uh, the college that I came, uh, I don't know what it was like three years ago when I came to. Exactly four, uh, four years and 20 days, I'm counting. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Chef, if I can qu quickly request, if you could just uh, fix your orientation of the camera, I think. I think. That's, that's much better. Thank you so much. Sorry for that interruption. But no, yeah, of course. Uh, Four years, 20 days and counting. Um, it was on this day that you came and graced the occasion at uh, the Institute. You took a master class. I, I clearly remember. It was a class that you clearly told me. You said, Archun, I don't want to give you a menu. Just give me ingredients. I'll cook. Not many people <laughs> say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was a wonderful day. How, how have you been? How are things? Uh, things are different. Uh, I'm here in New York City. Uh, Probably a month ago, there was a lot of unrest. Um, you know, there were a lot of, um, you know, with the given situation, uh, chefs were uh, very anxious, restaurants, a lot of restaurants closed, uh, people have diverged and some new concepts have come up. So the whole industry, the food industry is completely evolving. And I myself am contemplating on how I can, um, how I can leverage my potential and kind of change my thought process. So that's what's going on. These are, wise. Times. These are very, very demanding times. I think there's not yes. a soul out there that hasn't been affected or been pushed to the point, you know, where, they, where he or she has to rethink all the steps that they've taken so far. Lovely. So chef, I'm going to start before we jump into your kitchen. And by the way, let me start by also thanking you for letting us into your kitchen. I know how private uh, chef's kitchen is. So we're very fortunate. So this is this is not really. This is just like my demo uh, setup. Usually, I I don't I, because I want um, whoever's watching to actually see uh, what's going on. Because you know, kitchens usually you have the stove behind you, which yes. gets kind of complicated. Yes, yes, it does. But nonetheless, I mean, for what it's worth, you you you've taken a lot of effort, so we really appreciate that. Uh, so Thank before you. we start and, and get into the cooking, I want to ask you something. Now, you started at a very, very uh, young age, if I may say so myself. You started very early in your career and right from Mumbai till all the cities you, that you traveled. Then you went on to work at a Michelin star restaurant, not one, but two, and then cooked on a television show. Uh, done so many different things. Did you always vision that your career is going to be as exciting as it is today? Did you, was it always a part of the plan? <laughs> No, it's definitely, it's, I think it is, it's been much better than what I had anticipated. Okay. Uh, my goal, like I, I always, I always tell everyone, like if you, if you aim for something, write it down, write down your goals. So, you, or like your five-year goal, or your 10-year goal, but it's not going to happen exactly that way. It won't. Most likely it'll be even better than what you had anticipated so I uh, uh, this was like maybe 15 years ago I wrote down that uh, by um, by 28 29 I want to have my restaurant I want to have three restaurants in Bombay and um, I I want to do uh, like South Indian food and I had all these visions and I also wanted to do like something international but back at home I never thought I would be I would be living in another country and kind of pursuing um, food, but in a different format. So um, I'm glad I wrote that down because I was still, I'm still successful by that age, but it's been kind of, it's, it's a very different, different way. 
So I'm I'm very grateful for that. Yes, absolutely, and and all of us applaud your success and the growth that you've uh, shown because it's an inspiration, I must say. So thank you so much for uh, contributing thank you. in this industry. All right, so I think we're here for a very very special session. Um, you, uh, you know, generous generously agreed to do a little live demonstration for us. So why don't we talk about the dishes that you're cooking with us today? So. Um... When we earlier spoke about uh, what dish I should uh, showcase, um, we spoke about regional food and how um, certain cuisines have not been high. Indian food has uh, maybe it's getting its comeback. It's uh, globally, it is you know it's creating a lot of waves. But there are still a lot of regional cuisines that are not um, you know that. people don't even know about maybe like from the north north of india people don't know what's happening in the south of india and vice versa so um i wanted to just uh, talk about this uh, dish that i grew up eating it's it's like a sweet snack you eat it during like um uh tea time or it's like dessert and um my mom would always make it for us it's called a uh, paniyaram um yeah. okay so it's like a if i have to explain it like uh, simply it's it's like a sweet donut of sorts it looks like a donut mm -hmm. uh, like and um it's it's slightly fermented the dough so it's it's really easily digestible and um sort of like in the north you have uh, you eat good and uh, uh sesame seeds sort of in the winter uh, which is it's very similar here. it's like fermented uh, Uh, like idli or dosa batter, that kind of thing. Con consistency with a lot of jaggery, a lot of coconut, which is like very typical to uh, South India. Yeah. To start, uh, should I dive into? Please do. Uh, please do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I had to do the batter in advance because um, I had I had to uh, let it ferment for twelve uh, fourteen hours. It's also not as hot as it is. uh back in india in india i think uh oh, it was pleasant in in like it's very pleasant here <laughs> it's a pleasant for so in delhi if it's 45 <laughs> degrees it will probably take 2 hours to ferment i wouldn't i wouldn't doubt that yeah. uh, why fermentation is so good and it's of uh, chefs like um uh rene redzepi you know noma fame he all his food is all about fermentation and uh he is pickling this is pickling that is fermenting this and that and when you look at indian food we've already been doing it we've yeah. been eating pickles forever we've been fermenting batters we've been using like kamiri roti like the up up not like we we've already been doing sourdough yes. and uh we are on i think as indian chefs and people from india we kind of need to be proud of those little things Oh, it's Khamiri roti. It's just like layman's food. But when you come to the West, and then you see um, everyone talking about, say, sourdough, this and that, you're like, wow! I already know about this when I was like 16 or 17. Same with like dosa batter. It's fermented. Uh, so we've been uh, yogurt. Like we make yogurt at home. We don't even buy yogurt. So we've already been fermenting forever. Yeah. Um, So what I did is I used um, the South Indian uh, pony rice. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it should be available at any, um, I think, like South Indian uh, grocery store. If I if I found it in New York, obviously we're gonna find it in Delhi or any part. And traditionally you use a little bit of urad dal. but i didn't have i couldn't find urad dal so i just used like this punched meal like just a mix of urad dal yeah lentil so if you don't have this you don't have urad dal i would say just modify use moon bean you just need some kind of lentil to to aid with the fermentation and if you don't have lentils no problem you can just go 100% rice so it's like one cup of rice uh, a quarter cup of uh, the lentils soaked for 2 hours and then you drain off most of the water traditionally this uh, batter has um uh, bananas in it like ripe bananas uh however i want to also play with the season 
peaches are in season in New York right now. So I used I used one ripe peach in the batter to like so okay. it's got that nice perfume smell you know fragrance of the peach. It's not as sweet as banana, but it's uh, it's a very nice right. mellow nice. fragrance. Yes, and um, and then I've used palm jaggery, okay. which um, yeah. if you it's it's really dark. It's got that rich caramel flavor. Um, you can obviously use jaggery. If you don't have jaggery, use sugar. It's it's okay to modify. I have to you know talk about that as some of the Indian chefs. We're like, this is how my mom did it. This is this is exactly how it should be. But it's hard. Sometimes you don't have those ingredients. You're, you're in a country where you don't find everything. So um, so. I, I just use a regular blender. You don't have to use a grinder, and it's uh, it's completely blended. Lovely. So your dal, your yeah. rice, your jaggery, and your peach all go in the blender together. All go into the That's blender. Uh, what kind of together, consistency yes. are we looking at? A, are we looking at a very flowing consistency there? It, yes, and it has to be pretty fine. You yeah. don't want too much water, so you drain most of the water when you um, uh, when you soak it and roughly about like a quarter cup of water ish should be in it yeah mm -hmm. i mean this is little andaze se i've done and mm -hmm. i can i'll definitely send you the recipe i'll write down exactly how much you would need any yeah. sweet dish a pinch of salt like this is um enhances the sweetness of that dish so i've added a good uh, pinch of salt as well and this has also been fermented for, um, so the first time I ground it, it, it didn't grind completely. So I fermented it and then I again blended it one more time. Okay. Right before uh, use. And now this is, uh, this pan, I think if you find the, this is called like an appam pan or um, um, if you're like in another country or something, uh, the Japanese, have this uh, dish called takoyaki. So they have something similar. Okay. So you'll always find something like this. They're just little grooves inside a nonstick uh, heavy bottom pan. So I'm just gonna turn on the heat. So that's where the donut idea comes in. <laughs> but if you don't have this, no worries. Just spoon them like little uh, crepes or pancakes Banana. on like a nonstick or a cast iron. Yeah. Um, because it doesn't, it doesn't really like flow like a dosa does because it's got all that sugar in it, so it'll hold. And I'm just using some um, virgin uh, coconut oil. Okay. But of course, you can use uh, ghee, you can use uh, vegetable oil. I would refrain from using anything very strong, like say olive oil or something, because it'll um, it'll add a lot of flavor. So I'm def It's a good amount of Oils. It's almost like shallow frying. Okay. So, did you have a question while we wait for this? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Why not? Let's let's jump into them. I was just I was so engrossed with what you were doing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> let's do this. All right. So we've talked yeah. about what you're cooking today, and since you mentioned Indian cuisine right at the beginning. I wanted to ask you, um, when you think about Indian food, do you see that, you know, do you see that there's a trend where people are going to go back to regional cuisine? What is your view on that? Or do you think that people are going to, you know, continue with modernizing uh, Indian food as they, as they like to call it? Um, firstly, this has been, this, I'm just going to leave it on like a low flame so it like warms up gently without getting, uh, without the oil getting scorched. Uh, I don't want it to get burned. So it's like just this mellow heat. Um, yes, with um, when we define regional cuisine, we talk about like smaller states, like from the northeast or down south, that there's people, you know, showcasing those dishes. However, um, the age old, super buttery, super oily, like for example, like this dish, uh, maybe traditionally cooked with ghee, but I for example, if I have a, a group of guests and some of them are like lactose uh, intolerant or they're um, 
or they're dairy free or something like that, then I'm, I, I look at a different alternative. I think alternative. I think that is, uh, that is modernizing Indian food. Like not sticking to, um, this is how exactly it should be done. For example, I, we just spoke about the lentils. Like yeah. if, I, if I get only French lentils in say somewhere in France or something, I'm probably going to use that and still make do with it. Like yeah. local vegetables, wherever you find. If you're, if you're a South Indian in like Delhi and then you, have, you get saag, but if I want to cook it like a cordial kind of way, why not? So I think that is, um, that's where Indian food we should have the uh, mindset that it's okay to modify it. So do you see that happening? I mean, in, in New York or, or when you come back to India, do you, do you see witness that happening a lot? I think um, there is um, a good balance, like restaurants in, um, in New York, definitely, because it's so much cheaper and easier to find something local than trying to import. Uh, of course, spices yeah, may be very hard, but uh, just trying to use, like, for example, uh, there's this, instead of cilantro, there's this uh, herb called culantro that um, the Spanish people use, which has got very similar flavor to cilantro, but making a chutney out of it is not bad. It's like a little mellow, but it's, it's really nice. It's flavorful. So why not? It's not just about the foams and the gels and... Um, <laughs> And that, like, that's, that's I'm not glad you that element in the room. That was really important because a lot of people conceive modernization as using as many chemicals in the book or in the storeroom. Um, right. And often forget that that sometimes, of course, tampers with the uh, authenticity of the dish. Right, right. So, um, how to check if your oil is hot, if you can hold it for uh, more than like uh, if you if, if it shouldn't be as it shouldn't be like burning hot so it's I can feel that it's pretty pretty hot like I can hold it for like five seconds right above the heat so I know it's just like a tablespoon okay. in each little um, crevice can you yeah. see it clearly yeah yeah we yeah that's pretty clear okay. Interesting. So that is, you're right. You you did mention that it's almost as close to shallow frying because there's a reasonable amount yes, of oil. Yes, there's a reasonable amount of oil. But my mom never used that much oil. No? <laughs> no. She would try and do it with as little as possible. Yeah, because I remember when I was, you know, reading reading about your journey and I, and I stumbled almost everywhere I stumbled. It always started with you started cooking you know, helping your parents cook in, in the kitchen and then you would, of course, send to uh, cooking yes. classes at a very young age. Uh, yeah, I started cooking because I, I've always been creative. I've always uh, liked like theater and music and um, stuff, you know, like anything creative, like um, whether it was dance. So I think cooking just, uh, just took, blew my mind how amazing it is with when you in mix ingredients, especially with baking, like how just flour and flour and uh, some eggs create yeah. something phenomenal, yeah. So yeah. we'll just like gently cook it. You wanted to get pretty golden brown, if you can yeah. see. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then so we'll just flip it. Good. It's really no fuss. So now right here is like modernizing, um, modernizing um, Indian food in a way. All the flavors are very traditional, but just that I'm using peaches that are in season. Um, I didn't, didn't like use ripe bananas, which is very traditional to uh, making, making this um, paniara. And also uh, when I say donut, automatically, what do you think of? You think of you think of um, bread batter in a round shape. Yeah, and you think of also like, it's gonna be sweet. It's gonna yes. be a little crunchy maybe. Yes. It's gonna be soft in the middle. It's exactly what this is, but um, you were able to relate to it as opposed to me saying it's called Panyaram, right? Yes, yes. 
so uh, so it's okay to like modify words modify names so it's more accessible to people absolutely absolutely i mean if i call this a south indian donut i don't think it would be <laughs> would be wrong so i'm just using a fork to okay. turn it around turn them over to you okay i'm sorry do we have to turn them over is that part of yes the- yes you have to turn them over that's the tricky well, that's bit the, that's the tricky bit yeah all right all right so chef while we're while you're doing that if you don't mind i'm going to throw in my next question uh, for you uh, yeah. you know you've obviously i i can't even start to imagine how many hats you've worn uh, from starting with working in uh, the junoon to the yeah kitchen and then of course you had your own um, food truck as well in seattle and now you're now in new york in the rockefeller center now with yeah. all your food and and uh, experience tell me something with fine dining what do you th- where do you think that's going i mean of course we have to consider where we are today i'm sorry can you still see me yeah yeah so considering the situation we're in today how do you see fine dining uh, changing or do you think it'll uh, change for the better um you lost your uh, video feed by the way oh uh, yeah sorry No, to no. be uh, to be honest um this okay uh, just before we end uh, before we uh, before i answer the question this shouldn't take more than like 30 40 seconds on the other side because it's mostly cooked you see how like gorgeous they look oh that looks nice yeah, yeah. and it smells like divine um yeah it's it it shouldn't take too long and how you know that it's done it, if it basically springs back Okay. You kind of tell so um it's already fermented batter so it won't be wrong so i've already turned off the heat i'm just going to let it sit there and answer the question okay yeah um so okay, um, I, what i'm noticing yeah what i'm noticing is like a lot of fine dining restaurants who are not modifying their approach are closing okay and um There's a very famous restaurant in Seattle um, called uh, Candlest. Uh, very expensive. You spend like four hundred dollars per person. But right now they're selling ten dollar burgers. Wow! So they've completely changed their model. But it's a very. It's not just a regular burger. It's like the best meat, of um, <laughs> like forage, vegetables, or whatever. Like really great quality bread that they make in house. so even like something as simple as like a burger but you you elevated it by yeah. making your own bread by using like very high quality uh like meat or vegetable or what whatsoever but also keeping up with the times like people are have lost jobs like they they can't afford um that kind of a meal there uh we can obviously not sit together and eat so for right now definitely fine dining has taken um has taken a set back or you you have to do like meal services where uh the, you know everything is done and then the guest assembles it at home yes which is like it, it's difficult because a lot a lot of people don't know how to cook they they you know it's a lot of work for them so maybe for a special occasion they might they might uh they might not mind but well, in all honesty yeah no no sorry carry on no i was saying in all honesty um we have to change the way we are uh, for right now fine dining needs to take is taking a break that's for sure so in the young students out there who are watching us um who whose dream is to like get you know i want to do fine dining for right now like focus on your skills because those fine dining skills that some of these chefs have they relaying it into uh, like you know everyday food yes like for example you're going to see this uh, how how nice is going to look at the end of it with all the other components that we add to it wonderful well i i couldn't agree more and and you mentioned that very few people know how to cook though i probably would beg to differ because after watching this and having watched you before as well i think a lot of people have started cooking and i've always maintained 
people have always wanted to cook it's probably that they didn't they weren't too sure about how easy it is or how simple it is to start um perhaps it's just a glass ceiling that they were waiting to break so mm -hmm. thankfully with easy and simple recipes the ones that like you're showing right now i think anyone should be able to start but of course i must add you're making it look awfully easy but i'm sure it's a little tricky <laughs> no i think it is easy it is easy because uh, I do take, uh, like I'm taking a few online cooking uh, classes and I see some of the uh, students that are like cooking along and they're like, wow, this is really simple. And I think uh, chefs today have to um, make that happen for people. Like you, we're not, uh, we don't need to show us as being extremely, uh, what's the word, like, you know, that we are gods or something. Unaccessible. Yeah, we do. You're not unaccessible. Sorry? I said that yeah. you're no longer not unaccessible. There was a time you couldn't talk to the chef. I mean, I yeah. for one remember growing up and I'd be very petrified if, if I met the chef because, you know, it was usually a person who had a really good and a very, very uh, strict order around him or her. But today, thanks to people like yourself, Chef Vikas and so many others that are making their personality so warm and affectionate that you just want to talk to them. Right, right. Um, I think you're right. It's it's just it's so uh, important to to be accessible to uh, to the customer to uh, to uh, for mentorship as well. So when when uh, students like go out there and they learn, they need to like pass that on. The whole culture of like yelling of uh, being um, you know like being secretive about recipes, about being, um, uh, you know, being mean to the front of the house, being mean to um, everyone, just showing that you are, uh, you're like someone who's indispensable. I think that is, that is gone. I think that's going rather. It's, 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 no, it's, no, it's changing. It's, 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 if you're one of them, you're probably one of the minorities, I would say, if I can say so myself. Because majority of chefs, I think, have by and large um, embraced the fact that they need to be far more uh, gracious and generous with their knowledge because that's the only way that their knowledge will last longer. I mean, otherwise, mm -hmm. where are you going to take that knowledge with you, if you ask me? So, right, right. so you, you know, you've really touched upon a very important point. And in fact, for all of our students, if I can probably pose a question on their behalf, Tell me something before that we can even think about guesstimating when they're going to be back. What do you think that students can do at this point in time? Is there any advice that you have for students who are waiting for things to change or, or modify? Um, so I can give you an example of myself right now during this uh, time. Of course, the first few days were very, uh, first few weeks were very depressing. I was I, I, you know, I kind of had this feeling like, what am I going to do next? Like, this is all I know. I only know to cook. Maybe I should study something. I've got to, I've got to modify. Uh, what am I going to do? Like, that was the, my biggest question. Like, what am I really going to do? And I can feel that even uh, students right now, they're probably feeling the same thing. Like, you know, what, what am I going to do? I, I pick this career. What is the, what's the future here? So sometimes it's better not to think what is going to happen. Like, of course, you you can see that the trend with food is changing. But what I can do right now is improve myself. This is my time to better myself. Yes, I can't go to, to school and like take classes there. But sometimes self-learning is the best learning. I feel like I learned a lot more myself in my own time than I did um, than I did uh, right in you know in college because you're like distracted with your friends like sometimes you don't even want to be there so when you're self-learning you really put like attention you do it for the love of it like if you love food like reading about food is just fun like you even if you don't have books just there's thousands of bloggers out there who are really, you know, really writing great content, whether it be baking and pastry, whether it be from people all around the world. Yeah. And like watching videos, YouTube is like 
an amazing hotel. Like instead of wasting, uh, you know, like this TikTok and all this nonsense that I mean, I'm also I also get into it. I I won't lie. Like I do waste a lot of time on uh, Instagram, which I'm every day I tell myself, come on, I need to cut down my scrolling time. <laughs> But uh, uh, when you know, at least like if we can devote like one or two hours of a uh, quality time learning something, reading or practicing at home. Like for now, for me, for this time is I really want to be a great baker. Like I that's something that I I want to I want to know I want to be able to like uh, make great pastry. Like my goal for this week is I want to nail um, um, laminated pie in a uh, puff pastry right. or um, like croissant dough. And I. and i've been talk i've been thinking about it for the past 15 years like i want to nail it i only nailed it once or twice i want to be able to make it so this week that's my goal like i am going to learn it i'm going to practice it and what i do is when i make it i try and sell off the product by saying you know ask friends like do you want to buy this for like 2 dollars or 3 dollars you know like i try i try to think in that way like i don't want to waste this like i've bought this butter i've bought this flour i've bought all this So I just don't want to eat it myself. I don't want to just. Uh, I'll see if I can try and sell it off. Well, I so, think you know, you're cutting yourself short. I mean, that's give me that offer. I'll I'll definitely order everything. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just have no, to pay just, the transport. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm trying to say is try to think of that entrepreneur in an entrepreneurial way. Like yes. if I make this product, if it is really good, will it is it sellable? Yes. how do you like for example i try to sell like cookies which is like a very simple product but to think how it's it how perfect it needs to be am i weighing every ingredient is every cookie having the same amount of chocolate chips that you know just really going deep into it like what am i costing it oh i was actually making a loss because uh, you know if i'm not calculating wow or it's all my ingredients are the same price as my selling uh, cost like did i calculate my labor so just you know just trying to learn those aspects of it on your own will make you a better cook will will make you stronger yeah well i think those are those are very very valid points i definitely think that chef what you've shared is going to go um, a long way with our students who are listening because very often we tell them that look there are things that you can of course learn in a school or or in a structured format but i think it is your self drive that will always outweigh um your your uh, structured programs or opportunities that have that you've crafted for yourself right. and enterprising as you are i think uh, you're you're doing some phenomenal work uh, that's that's really commendable so mm-hmm. so where are we with our uh, banyadas are, are, are we are they resting or i can see a plate oh, Yeah, and uh, so <laughs> what are the other components? So I, uh, since I wanted to invigorate the peach flavor, yeah. I used some of that jaggery. Wow. I've used a uh, cinnamon, cinnamon, um, I can see. yeah, clove and a uh, cardamom. Excellent. Just jaggery in water, like a simple syrup, but instead of sugar, I use jaggery, okay. and um, I just cut the peach in half, and I'm. Um, it sort of the peach gets blanched right so like you can take off the skin very easily okay. why i don't want the skin is it kind of is a little leathery and um uh, when you're eating dessert you don't really want to chew too much like it's not the most pleasant flavor yeah so, yeah so, if it um, was so the, i have them going with banana is is that what was was that the traditional ingredient sorry if it wasn't the peach would it was just going with banana originally so no the traditional thing is just eat it straight up once it's done oh. right all right okay yeah so we are um what uh, let's go back on the question about modernizing food yes. uh, modernizing indian food is sometimes with indian food it's very one tone so um like this the paneeram it looks really gorgeous right it's beautiful it's nice like one bite i'm going to eat it but then the <laughs> the second one the second one that i eat is also going to be the same taste so yeah. after 2 3 i'm it's not as enjoyable but yeah. with um 
with kind of modern dining, you want different elements. Like you want some something creamy, you want something uh, crunchy, you want some fresh element, which is a fruit. Sure, and yeah. uh, this will look like a fine dining plate, but this can absolutely be like a parfait. Like it can be in a small bowl. It can be, it's, 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 it's up to you how, how you want to envision it. But it's very important, like as a, as a budding chef that you have to think of all these elements when you make something. There's got to be some saltiness. There's got to be some bitterness, sweetness, crunchiness, freshness, and um, that's what when I thought when I thought of this dish, I feel I I felt like it does need, you know, other elements. So I'm just reinforcing the flavor of the peach by like I've just I literally made the simple setup and I just put it skin side uh, up, and okay. you can see it's still like it's still the whole shape is like maintained. Uh -huh. It's not, um, it's not become completely soft. Wow. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to slice that or chop that and add it as well. Um, I'm, I'm going to excuse myself because I have this ice cream that I wanted to uh, add it with. I'll just take, um, say, 30 minutes. 30 seconds, yes. sorry. All right. Okay. <laughs> 30 seconds, I'll be back. All right. So for all our viewers out there, um, while we wait for uh, Chef Aarti Sapat, let's do a quick recap as to what she's covered so far. She's, co she's teaching us how to make a classical uh, pinado with her own twist. She has uh, replaced the bananas with lovely peaches that are in season in New York. She's cooked the uh, peaches in a lovely jaggery, and jaggery uh, sauce that is infused with cardamoms and uh, cinnamon. I have requested Chef Aarti to share the recipe with us. So for all those listening here and want the recipe for this gorgeous dish that she's prepared, email, email us at corporate at chefiica.com. That is one word, corporate at chefiica.com. Once we receive your email, we will send you the recipes as soon as we have them as well. And um, what is commendable is that Chef Aarti doesn't only embrace what is from the past, but she adds to it by showing us what is currently available and accessible. Well, that was quick. I almost yeah. got 30 minutes. <laughs> Less than 30 minutes, yeah. All right, so we have our ice cream. So, so I'm actually going to call it frozen yogurt. You know, um, uh, you're probably wondering like why this is like too much. Why is that ice cream also involved? Um, no, I like my ice cream. I'm sorry, but I... Uh... <laughs> yeah, so if, if this is... I've used hung yogurt. It's so simple. It's just so simple to make. It's hung yogurt and the same uh, jaggery with a little bit of cardamom. So it's got the flavors of mishti doi, which is another dessert, or like shrikhan. Like it's, it's got the same flavors. Um, but once it's frozen, it tastes exactly like mishti doi. And you don't have to... Chew. Yeah, sorry. Why am I not surprised that you didn't go out and make this? I thought you were actually going to just buy a buy a box of ice cream, but I'm not surprised at all. I'm no, of course <laughs> not. Like that, <laughs> that's sacrilegious. I would never do that. Um, so yeah, I just froze it, um, pretty much like a little slab, yeah. and it has no ice ice particles really. If you have an ice cream machine, you want to churn it. It's going to be even more creamy. But so, um, hung yogurt, and of course, hung uh, yogurt. Uh, cardamom. You mentioned jaggery. Cardamom, the jaggery, just as much a sweetness as you would like, um, and um, that's it. That's that's all. Like a little pinch of salt as well. Like I said, every sweet thing needs a little bit of uh, sweetness. And I have here, I uh, puffed. Um, ragi. I think oh, that's yeah. very easily available, like in uh, back home, right? But here it's not. So I had to puff it myself. Really hot pan, a uh, couple of tablespoons of uh, amaranth, and just like agitate, and it'll, it'll puff up. Wow! Wow! That's yeah. Nice. So that's that's another. So that's like your crunchy garnish. These are all like South Indian elements that I kind of put together. So it's about thinking okay, like what, I don't want to use um, anything that's not from the cuisine. So it's yeah. a, I'm using yogurt, I'm using the jaggery again and again, um, using some fruit, I'm using the ragi, I'm going to use some uh, coconut for garnish. So um, 
really put your mind to it when you make a dish think about oh you know what flavors when i eat this what do i think about like I, because my mom would always put little pieces of coconut inside it but it would sometimes like get stuck in your teeth because they're like uh, little pieces so how can i improve that like by using maybe a coconut chip or like grated coconut like just being conscious when you're cooking so i the same yogurt mixture uh that i this is the, it's not frozen so i want some like uh, sauce as well so i'm just going to put a little bit at the bottom yeah this is definitely probably not how it was cooked many years ago at home was it no no of course <laughs> not but it's uh you are um when you taste it you it will take you back to that memory i'm sure i'm sure no you definitely i i know you you are uh, one to obviously always contain the authenticity of the of the dish that's what i maintain that's yeah, what i meant yeah. to go all right so while you're doing that chef i just had a quick question for you um yeah. you know you started you, you we've been talking about retaining flavors now you started very early at the age of god knows when but you started when you were in mumbai then you traveled quite a bit now from that early stage of cooking how much of that early stage cooking has influenced how you cook today i mean uh regardless of whether when you were at uh, at junoon or um any other place that you worked in after that do you believe mm -hmm. that your cooking is influenced by how you started out definitely i mean like i still love to play with my mom's uh flavors like the flavors that i grew up eating my grandma uh my both my grandmothers uh, maternal and paternal had uh, a huge influence on um the way i have i view uh view cooking right mm. um and my travel like my parents always took us on like little vacations even if it was uh like in the same state like it was mahableshwar like when i think of strawberries mm. i think of mahableshwar like it yeah. the best um strawberries ever so when i think of a strawberry based dish i want to create those same intense like how do i bring if it's not a sweet strawberry maybe i need to add a little sugar if it's not that sour maybe i need to add a little like lemon or lemon zest so it, uh, to bring that memory back of what i tasted so i'd really recommend if you have the time if you have if you have some savings please um please go travel travel as much as you can uh like in my early years when my dad took us to thailand um i i kind of was mesmerized by you know the galangal and the lemon grass and all those uh, those kind of flavors so even today when i when i eat something like that or i make something with those ingredients it takes me to that memory and i'm able to cook better because because i was exposed or i exposed myself to as much as you know i could that's true that's true i think you're right the best investment a chef very wisely said once that you know the best investment one can make to one's own career is travel um i don't think that probably going to be a little pushed back in the to do list yeah. right now under the current circumstances but yeah uh, but yeah. that's where youtube works that's, that's where youtube true. works yeah but it comes with a price you know it's it's the trade off that i i probably signed up for when you said that you'd cook and sadly i won't be able to taste but that's all right you'll tell us how good it is yeah <laughs> no but you <laughs> make it yourself that that's I'm an option the, the we'll call that plan b <laughs> we'll we'll call that plan b i'll cook all right yeah. so <laughs> All right so listen I I still have I still have one or two more questions if that's all right with you Yeah but I I'll just finish this plate up and then um Go ahead go ahead and discuss this and then again have questions So yeah, that, um yeah. If you can see this Yeah yeah that's pretty clear So okay. if you can bring up the so plate three... the dad can you kind of bring up the plate a little bit closer to the camera if that's possible Oh yeah 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 Okay so lovely. I just got a couple of pieces of the uh, pieces of the peach I have the ice cream. It hasn't set hundred percent. It's a little soft, sure. um, so I just like cut out chunks out of it. Um, there's the sauce in the uh, at the bottom, and then there is um, um, for the crunch element. I'm using some of the puffed uh, 
the ragi ragi so it just yeah. like sticks to everything looks wow. nice and then a little bit of the coconut chips there's so many ways to like um plate this voila you could dice up the peach you could if you don't have that fruit use whatever fruit you have that is a very sweet pineapple i think that will work really well yeah so there you go so you're right that's really nice wow definitely threw me off when you said donut but i think i'd prefer this kind of donut any day that, that looks really nice <laughs> All right, so we, if you could ask, if I could ask, yeah, okay. All right, well, that looks fantastic. So, um, so I guess that's 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 a lovely presentation. I must compliment you on that. Uh, that looks really nice. It looks complete. As regards to the dish, I do have one quick question. So, if it wasn't bananas, you chose peaches because they're they're seasonal and local, of course. Uh, any other fruit? Could you swap it with apples, for example? Is there any other fruit that you? I think apple is great. I think it'll. almost give you that apple fritter taste yes um yeah it's a completely gluten free dish it can be made dairy free if you're not using the yeah. yogurt element and you think of something else uh you can think of some other creamy like a sorbet kind of based um i think a jaggery sorbet will be really cool or like a fruit sorbet like maybe the same fruit that you use like apple make that as a sorbet uh, or um um yeah i think any super sweet fruit if you're using something with uh, too much of high water content um see that you don't use too much of the juice yeah um i think that would be uh some good advice there so you do, you've seen the consistency of the the batter you don't want it to be yeah. too runny yeah no no absolutely yeah. that's critical i'm sure i'd be really thrilled if some people try this at home and i know and, that and, and try it and another thing with the rice um i i was able to find uh, this um south indian rice but you don't have to i've i've used like jasmine rice i've used um i've i've used like anything that's like um just a short grain rice that you can find basmati maybe too um is it doesn't have that much of like um Uh, what's that called like it's it's extremely lean right it, it doesn't have that much starch in it so that may be a little challenging but uh, any short grain uh, rice that you can find at the store um yeah go ahead try it and it will work yeah no we definitely i think you've got a weekend cooking uh, fix uh, sorted for us i think most of us when we were struggling to think what we're going to cook this weekend There we have it. We're going to cook a lovely dish prepared by you. Uh, the recipe that I have already generous, generously offered that we will be sharing with them. I, I hope that's uh, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Chef yeah, recipe absolutely. is going to come, and we're going to share it with everyone that requests for it. I've already shared my email address. It's corporate at chef iica dot com. So all our viewers, if you are interested to cook this fabulous dish, send us an email, and we'll send you the recipe as soon as we have it from Chef Arthi herself. Lovely. So uh chef if it's if it's okay with you I had as I said a few last questions and um we'll of course give it a wrap then and uh can't wait to have you taste that and tell us how great it is. Yeah. Um <laughs> so you know we've been talking about ingredients and you've been really really kind to share with us that you know how easily with the knowledge uh, available you've been able to adapt where necessary you know you've chosen to use peaches which is of course seasonal and local. cooking in cooking indian food in the us must have its challenges right must have has its own uh, flock of challenges such as availability of ingredients talent etc what are they and how do you overcome them so as a chef that you've been there how many years are we talking how long has it been since you've been in the uh, us uh, nine years wow so nine years i'm sure you've seen your fair share of challenges cooking indian cuisine particularly when you are one to advocate authenticity and classical indian food So tell us what are those challenges and how do you plan to overcome them? Um, one of the big uh, big challenges would be finding um, fresh spices. So I, but actually now it has become so much better, and uh, I always try and buy whole spices if I have to buy something from uh, from here, but. of course when if i visit india i try to have my supply of 
uh, whatever cardamom and those kind of like really fragrant spices. They are much cheaper yes. in India too. But here, yeah, try to use uh, if you you need cumin powder, it's better to buy whole cumin and grind it because that will be more flavorful than buying straight up cumin powder. That's what I've noticed. Um, fresh vegetables and um, yeah, you don't get you know it's very hard to find dudi and methi and stuff like that. But there are like different counterparts. There are other squashes like million squashes in season, uh, which will taste like if you put Indian elements to it, it's going to taste the uh, same. So I think it's actually made me much stronger as a chef because it makes you think out of the box. Like how can I use this and um, like we made there's this uh, vegetable called delicata squash. So it looks like a little flower if you uh, Google it. And we made pakoras out of it. So like thinly sliced, uh, batter fried it. Uh, it was like phenomenal. And when you grow up thinking of pakoras, you only think of like maybe uh, potatoes or onions or like those typical four or five vegetables, right? Yeah. Uh, so so it rains, you have them on the table. Sorry? As soon as it rains, they're all four of them around the table. All the four pakoras. Yeah, 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 right. All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So that's an interesting perspective. You, you know, you've shared that um, it's it's helped you actually strengthen as a chef because yeah. different situations actually ask you to think out of the box. That's very interesting. All right. So um, for all our young chefs out there, people who are aspiring to um, you know become chefs in the in the near future, tell us in your own view, uh, is social media becoming more of a necessity for chefs as they uh, you know try and either change the way they become more accessible to audiences or do you think that's, you know, that's being taken too far? What are your views on that? So as far as social media is concerned, do you think that's um, a necessity or not? I think it, uh, social media can sometimes mess with your mind. You feel like someone else is living the life of their dreams. Uh, they have a million followers and they're like 20 years of 20 or 22 years old. Um, we have to, I feel like um, the kind of work that I have received and um, and that kind of like helping me grow has not always been through social media. So it's not as important as sometimes people people think as it should be. Of course, you, you should. Like I feel like uh, everyone should be posting what they're doing, quality work um, every day you're judged on the basis of your social media. Like if you're just p posting pictures of you yourself partying and uh, you're like, just like, uh, just like wasting time, then your bosses or people who hire you, they'll probably look you, you look you up on social media and be like, oh, oh my God, this, this, they'll judge you. Like, oh, probably this person not a good candidate because uh, they're not really into, um, into their profession. So, it needs to be kept as professional as possible. Um, it has, social media does help in a way, it pushes you to create something. Like now I have, I am going to like play this nicer, this is gonna be my content for tomorrow. Like, you know, uh, it's gonna be a nice picture for tomorrow. So yeah. um, we, we can definitely think of it. That's how I think of it as, if you're like running after followers and stuff, I have to like, I have to say that uh, a lot of people do, um, you know, you can buy followers. And so don't get caught up in that kind of a race. Like, oh, this one has so much and I need to get more. So I'm going to post like certain uh, content that is not like relevant to what you're, what you're doing, but keep posting and keep posting, keep doing, make yourself as like for this dish, for example, like you can't taste it. No. And I could just say this has got jaggery in it, but it could be like mud, you know, right? Yeah. Or uh, <laughs> I could say this is uh, this is so and so. This is sweet, but what if I've not even put any sweetness in this? Like it's basically a salty dish. So be truthful to yourself. Like when <laughs> it will relay that in your picture. Like sometimes I see these photographs, and I'm like, I know that this person has not even cooked that chicken because it looks raw. So don't, don't do that just for the, it, it needs to be, it needs to be as authentic and it can be relayed in pictures and videos. 
Well, that's a very interesting twist. I, I probably want to just add one thing and tell me if you agree or not. But um, you know, I think it's the it's how you use social media. You've you've stressed upon that as mm -hmm. well. I think today social media can be taken as a very good tool to connect with mentors. And I and I say that because my next yes. question is about mentorship. You know, I've always always heard Mr. Datta, our founder, and everyone else who's ever come to the institute say that look, look for more mentors. As students, you all need to look for mentors who you look up to, who you aspire to be, uh, be like. Mm -hmm. um, so mentorship can be something that I think social media can help bridge the gap. Now, if I'm sitting in, in New Delhi and you're all, all the way over in New York, God only knows if it's taken us four years to uh, see you again. Um, I yeah, think social right. media has made it possible. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Who, would have, who can imagine when you'd be back with us again? I hope it's soon, but uh, until then, we'll have to make do with this. Right. So I think if you agree, then advice to students should be that, you know, use social media rightfully, the way it's meant to be used, connecting with people. Follow the work that you do, the decisions that you've made in your career so that they can actually learn from them. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Um, if you see my, the people I follow, I try to follow only people that um, actually enrich my life. You've got to like, not you, that's, that's very important what you're feeding into your mind, right? Because you're constantly scrolling and then <laughs> if you're feeding your mind just junk, uh, that's 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 what will show on your plate. Will show on uh, when you speak. So following these amazing chefs out there, these amazing restaurateurs, authors, you know, whatever, whatever inspires you, yeah. musicians, whoever inspires you. Yeah, I think that is uh, pretty crucial. Yeah. I did want to add a question uh, that I feel like students always ask me. Um, and uh, they asked me, what do I do to come to the US? Like that's all, <laughs> yes. uh, what do I do? And it's well, I was, very I was bordering question. on that question. It's just that I, I feel that, you know, students have always wanted to actually ask this, that how does one make a journey like yours possible? So why don't you go ahead and ask that question, uh, answer that question for us? It'd be very interesting. Um, firstly, I have to say that I had experience. I worked with Taj Hotels dedicatedly for five years which was my, uh, my uh, what is that called? Like, it was like the structure, uh, my the base. Yes. The foundation, that's the right word, yes. My uh, foundation was very strong, whether it be like I was exposed to great high quality Indian food. I was exposed to high quality like French food. I was also exposed to like banquet cooking. So cooking in bulk. So, and when it, and sometimes some of these things I felt like, why am I even learning bulk cooking right now? I'm never going to cook like this. Like I'm never going to cook for thousands of people. Like little did I know, like 10 years later, it's going to be the most beneficial part for me. So uh, you have to get your basics strong. You have to go through the grind. If you, if, if chefing is your, is your passion, right? If that's what you want to do, if that's not what you want, you want that's not what you want to do, then uh, think of a different, like an alternative kind of food career. I don't know if it's right. Even if you want to become a writer, like on, say you want to become a New York Times writer, Bombay Times writer for food, you have to know the in-depthness of, like you really need to go through that grind. Otherwise you're not going to be able to write that kind of quality. So it's very essential to understand. And India does have some brilliant restaurants, brilliant hotels that will season you it's taught me work ethic. Like even till today, like any kitchen I walk in, the first, um, mostly the, the first thing that I hear is you have like brilliant work ethic. Like none of us, like even Americans say, none of us have that work ethic. Where do you get that from? And that is from that grooming that uh, Taj definitely gave me. Maybe a lot of um, like living in India, like hospitality is in our blood. So we know, we know that. So once you come like fresh, you just come to college here, you have nothing to offer to this country. So why would they want to keep you? That is, that's my uh, bottom line. I, I, it might sound harsh, but that's what it is. Like, why would, why would a country, if you are not, at the end of the day, it's, it's an exchange, right? You want to live in another country, you, you need to be able to provide a great service. Otherwise, you're not 
Well, I think it's that it's that it's like that question they say that you know what are you bringing to the table? I'm bringing you yes. there. I'm giving you an opportunity or a land of opportunity for that matter. Uh, what right. have you got to offer? I I remember, Chef, you were mentioning this last week when we were talking as well. You said that you know, at the end of the day, the the people who benefit most out of any country, be it America or any other outside, are the ones who bring something to the table, who actually have experience. Because when they walk into the kitchens there, they 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 they're bringing their experience with them, and I'm sure that must have been the case for you also. Um, yeah. But it's been fabulous nine years, I'm sure. Um, you've only grown from strength to strength. We've seen you. That's think, another thing. Like you have to be ready to sacrifice a yeah. lot. <laughs> Whether it's my time with my uh, family, which is like I think the most that I feel about is. Uh, but of course, we stay connected through phone, and I try to go to India every year. Uh, as except this year, I wasn't. I'm still gonna try if I can. Uh, yeah, but um, you're away from your family, which is one big thing. it's very easy to get caught up in uh the glam of this country whether it be alcohol drugs friends like and that kind of things that will distract you from your goal you have to remember that you're here for a reason is to like build yourself so and um you have to be adaptive innovative i cannot be thinking like how i would think back in india it's a very different Wait, I have to think a little American in my approach. Well, they say, or you know, people American, don't understand what I'm doing. Yeah, well, they say that when in Rome, we you know act like the Romans. Yes, so exactly like if I call this by its original name, no one's going to buy this product. If I call this the Indian donut, yes, it's <laughs> going to sell like hotcakes. So uh, those which, are things. Speaking of which, can Sorry. we have a nice name for it? Because that that'll be the second dish we would have named. with you um i'll give you the, i'll give away the first dish that we that is a part of our curriculum now which is the red snapper ala sampath so we still teach that we still teach that in oh our oh my curriculum. god <laughs> yeah it's all framed up in our uh, in our uh, library it's still there so we we tell wow that's so incredible i'll send pictures of this uh, for sure um but well, i think we can just call this the south indian donut <laughs> the south oh <laughs> <laughs> with all that with all that flair i think it deserves better but i think we'll leave that to the audience to uh, give it some really interesting names when you share us the picture we'll ask in the caption and we'll choose the best one and i guess we'll uh, name it by that i think yeah that's what you mean by uh, it's called uh, uh, under promise and like over deliver right <laughs> yes. when you and i think that's kind of uh, also becoming very big in the industry now is just calling this we'll just call this A, a veggie burger and when you order it it's like it blows your mind because it's probably something that you didn't anticipate you didn't anticipate something so simple uh or simplistic so that's also becoming a new trend where we're not using very like fancy names just keeping it as simple like tofu and chili oil but it's it's probably got like some you know seasoned vegetables at the bottom like homemade tofu and it's like you, you know that's 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 just um how the industry is becoming today that's true was well, speaking of industry and my final question uh, for you because yes. I, i could not have ended this session without it as i said as i said in my introduction you are in fact a role model for women across the world you are in fact a role model for men across the world also um uh, tell me for all the women chefs that aspire to uh, join this industry or uh, are already a part of it is there any word of advice for uh, women working in this industry from you you've accomplished so much i mean seriously um i i have accomplished uh, a little bit because i've had um a lot of support from my family but i will say that not in the beginning my parents uh my dad definitely was not too happy about me getting into the food industry and that was a tough time for me because i felt like they did not get what i was doing and i'm sure a lot of girls out there will also feel that maybe they're not supportive like family is not supportive uh say husband is not supportive i don't know like a lot of um factors that may come in um during that tough phase when nobody supports you is when you have to like power through 
you just have to keep going you just have to keep keep doing keep learning keep and sometimes uh, now after so many years i realized that it's not about like making your family proud it's not about making for me that was the biggest thing i want to make my parents proud i want to make my friends proud it's not about that it's about making yourself proud and happy and i'm still learning that it's taken a very long time to understand and learn that um which is the women out there if people are not supportive around you sometimes you have to either move away from them try to make them understand or say be firm on your ground that listen i know you're not happy about this but this is the only thing that will make me happy so at least let me give this a shot and that's the conversation i had with my family and that's why they were they turned that around they were supportive this they helped me come to the us without them it it wouldn't really have been possible so um just staying strong is is the key for the first few years once you get some success you become independent then you're like you know what i don't care i'll i'll keep going <laughs> Well, I think it's worked out pretty well for yourself, and and uh, <laughs> if I may say so, your family and friends must be super proud of you. Um, we're really happy that you took this decision. It would have been a great loss for this industry had you not chosen to be here. <laughs> so, so thanks for that. We all. That's very opinion. kind of you to say. No, no, you've been very modest, I must say, and uh, I hope that you keep keep doing what you're doing. Um, we wish you all the very best, and thank you so much for this lovely demonstration. I have promised my, uh, my viewers that you know you will we will get the recipe very soon and when we do we'll share it with them uh, so all they have to do is they have to email us at corporate@chefiic.com and we will send them the recipe as well all right chef so with this i just want to give you a very big thank you from everyone over here in new delhi thank you and, for having me and i, I enjoyed myself it has been an honor i mean to be honest i i could not have imagined a, a better way to end this week and i'm sure for all of us watching that today's lesson has been great so we will be cooking this dish i assure you in fact i will try okay. myself once i get okay. my hands on it and uh, all the <laughs> ingredients uh, until next week uh, folks thank you so much for tuning in until next week we will see you again here and we bid farewell to chef arti chef arti thank you so much have a lovely day thank you thank, thank you, you. Bye.